Hey guys. So, we're gonna have a little bit of a serious video for a second. Nothing crazy, but look at this horde I got going on here. So my house is heated with a wood stove and it takes a lot of wood to keep it warm. But, it's not what this is about. So, I've been wanting to do this for a little while and talk to you guys about what it costs to own the Franken sled. So, this is my 1974 Smoker Craft. It is uh, a bit of, a, yeah, a, a Frankenstein. It's been through many renditions, but this one is, uh, this current rendition is, I don't know what to call it. It is this. So, if you're curious, more details about this boat, subscribe to my channel and you'll see all kinds of stuff about it, me using it, me customizing it and whatnot so the actual purchase price of this boat it's got a uh, a jet pump on the bottom it's a 75 mariner um, the uh, little kicker motor was just purchased last year uh, I got that used but it's a bit of a mess right now sometimes my kid she comes in here and plays with stuff which is cool whatever um, this boat is, uh, not cheap. Just in case you didn't know, if you're interested in purchasing a boat, you've never owned a boat before, or, or you think your boat's expensive. Boat is actually, I've heard this from many people, it's an acronym. It's a four letter acronym and it stands for bust out another thousand. And you know what? It's kind of true. So, got a little bit of a list here. The actual purchase price of the boat was about $1,500. That wasn't directly out of pocket. That was uh, a trade of a little red S10 pickup and another boat. But I was in those items, $1,500. So, and then it's gone through several different renditions, meaning I spent about $300 on flooring and stuff like that. And then the widening of the boat only cost me about $400. And the window setup, the windshield setup is about a hundred bucks. So about twenty three hundred dollars was the purchase price. As you know, what I'm in it, what I'm actually in it right now, and that's not not very much money if you consider what kind of boat it is. But uh, yeah, so the actual down payment of the boat, I basically never do that with anything. If it costs more than 500 bucks out of pocket, I'm probably not going to buy anything unless I absolutely need it. I'm a bit of a bit of a tight ass or frugal or creative or whatever you want to call it. So I find a way to not spend large amounts of money. And I become quite handy in the process. So this boat is uh custom, meaning homemade. And this is the uh, patch that I put all the way down the middle. I cut this boat right in half. And uh, I'm really proud of that. And it's still to this day does not leak a single drop, which is really important. Um, the little motor, uh, I got that from the Facebook Marketplace. It was $250. And I had to do a little bit of carburetor work on it and a little bit of welding on the lower end, on the uh, actual housing, not the lower unit, but... Uh, yeah, runs awesome. Runs better than the big girl. Big girl. But, uh, not that it's big, but it's actually underpowered for this size of a boat now. The boat only does about 25 miles an hour. Uh, about maybe 28 downstream. And I've had to put some things into that motor that wasn't on my list. So, for example, I needed a new stator. I needed a new uh, CDI box. And I've replaced a couple of coils and just regular old maintenance. And those items are, you know, oh, and I grenaded a uh, impeller um, two years ago because for some reason it's a jet pump. So I turn this thing into a rock polisher all the time. There's so, several sections of my r local river here, the Willamette, that's uh, like negative depth and like half an inch ankle deep and I'll whoosh, that sucker right up in there. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. I like, I like watching my passenger's face when I'm like 
blasting to the the dry spot and they're like uh, uh. It's just looking back at me and eh, it's a good time you gotta experience that why don't you get in the boat with me and i'll put you through hell it's a good time uh so a few uh probably you know each of those electrical items are about 200 bucks a piece and new impeller was about 200 bucks i try not to polish rocks too often but sometimes it's just too much fun and uh in the bottom of the boat i mean it doesn't leak so I haven't caught anything too hardcore yet. I have got stuck many times. Anyway, so the actual daily running of the boat, here it is, the nitty gritty. This motor, the big motor, gets 1.3 miles to the gallon. You heard that right. That is a 15 gallon tank, and I literally have about 18 miles of range total. Meaning I can go like about comfortably with a full tank. I can do about seven miles one way and seven miles back and still make it and not, not be too worried. So that is a major downfall. If you have a really, really big lake that you like to fish the other side of, for example, like maybe Michigan or something like that, that may be a problem for you. And that is because of the jet pump. If I were to put a regular old lower unit, and I've got one, I've got one sitting over there, but uh, but the motor's too high for that, and I'd have to make some sort of jack plate or whatnot. No, I'm not going to buy a jack plate. I can make something. All thread, right? But uh, if I were to put a prop on it instead of the jet pump, then I would be getting much better fuel mileage and gain a whole bunch of speed. But that takes away all the fun and the whole point of owning a giant flat bottom boat. So, yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible fuel mileage. And it is tuned up. I mean, it runs good. So, it's really not going to get any better. Uh, a new wear ring and a new impeller, you know, notched in really, really tight and really good clearance makes a great hole shot, but it doesn't change my fuel mileage at all. Uh, when it, you talk uh, marine stuff, it's more like uh, gallons per hour, they say, instead of miles per gallon, but... I'm not even going to try to do the math. I mean, I'm start and stop all the time, so I don't like flat out across the ocean or anything like that. This boat's never even seen salt water. So, uh, yeah, it's really expensive to run. I mean, I most of my little holes where I go sturgeon fishing and stuff here on the Willamette, I, uh, I've only got, you know, max like a five-mile run to do one way. And that's like That's like the furthest. And any way you look at it, Bait, tackle, gas, two-stroke mix, all that stuff. You know, I'm. It's it's at least twenty dollars every every trip, every weekend. So, can you afford a boat? Yes. Um, you know, hundred bucks a month. You know, you can run a boat locally pretty easily. <clears throat> but uh, this boat, for example, is super inefficient. I mean, it, it could be, it could be a lot more efficient. I mean, a V hole, you know, one that's not flat on the bottom, gets better mileage because you're moving the water rather than trying to be on top of it all the time. So, there's, there's ups and downs with different hole designs, but that's basically, an, in a nutshell, what it costs to run this thing. At, you know, at a minimum, twenty bucks a day. Can you afford to run your boat? And I'm curious what kind of boat you guys have and how much it costs you to run your boat. And, you know, if it's uh, way less than mine or way more, you know, if you've got a tiny boat, uh, hashtag tiny boat nation, love you guys. Uh, what's it cost to run your little boat? You know, if you've got like a little, say like a 12 foot V bottom and you've got it decked out and tons of stuff on it, what's your boat weigh? And what's, what do you get for, what do you get for, uh, fuel mileage i'll say or gallons per hour however you want to calculate it uh just curious um i know mine's super expensive i don't really know of anybody else that would share that with me or even want to talk about it because you know their wife's standing right next to them or something like that but yeah so uh that's what it costs to run and if you guys get bored hit that red button down there and i'll see you on the next one